Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary, a very thankful, a very thankful version uh, and grateful version of Wake Up Legendary. Uh, my friends, I am here to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, of course, if you if you celebrate Thanksgiving. I mean, gosh, who doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving? Um, no, I, I would assume that some of you around the world may not celebrate some of these quirky little American holidays that we have here in, in, in America. But if you do happy Thanksgiving, uh, certainly grateful for all of you being here and, and grateful for, uh, this community. Um, it's, it, it breathes life into these lungs every day, baby. So this morning, we're still going to be bringing you an amazing show with an amazing guest. And, uh, I'm really excited to talk to her because she has gone from the classroom, okay, the traditional classroom into our classroom and, uh, and is now turning around and finding a new adventure financially uh, and also, you know, hopefully less stress and more happiness. Kelly, welcome to the show. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I love the spelling of your name. It's very different and it almost threw me off, but it's, <laughs> it's Kelly and it's just pronounced in, or it's just spelled in this very unique way. Correct. Yeah. It's Kelly. I get Keely a lot, but yeah, it's Kelly. And I have my mom to thank for that one. <laughs> She's, she did it. She did it. Yes. Yes. They, they, well, uh, there's, there's, there's definitely worse names. Uh, yep. <laughs> I, I can think of a few. You've got a beautiful name. You've just got a unique spelling. Um, so welcome to the show and thanks for joining us today. Um, let's talk about your journey and you kind of uh, going from a place that I didn't spend a whole lot of time in. Um, I th you are a what sort of a teacher or professor or what? tell us what you do or what you did. I teach high school business, high school. Um, mostly technology, uh, but I've been teaching entrepreneurship too. So I teach things like game design, animation, web page design, um, programming, those types of things. And then I also taught one class that wasn't technology and that was entrepreneurship. And so I have done that for the, this is my 16th year of teaching. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. So what what has made you uh, now get involved in legendary and online marketing, uh, digital marketing? What what brought, you know, a reasonable, seemingly reasonable, OK, logical person like yourself, uh, intelligent? What what attracted you to to our crazy way of life? So for the last few years, my high school kids, my, my entrepreneurship class mostly has been asking me how people make money online. How, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Um, yeah. because they were seeing people, um, the high school that I taught at had a kid that, uh, was, has a lot of subscribers on YouTube and does really well, um, on YouTube. And my kids were just like, how, how do you do that? And I looked at them in class and said, I have absolutely no idea. Like, I, I don't know. I've taught brick and mortar. Um, for 10 years, I taught brick and mortar and just thought that was what it was supposed to be. Right. Um, and I'm on my phone and this is going crazy. Um, anyway, I, uh, was basically that, um, I had, I didn't know. I didn't know. I knew how to, I knew how to operate a brick and mortar business. Didn't know how to do anything else with that. So yeah. I decided I was going to start researching it. So at the end of, 2021, probably about this time of year, because I was getting ready to go into where my kids actually build businesses, they build a business plan, they come up with with um, ideas of, of what business they want to run. Um, nice. So I basically went out and started learning. And I did a lot of YouTube research, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I just couldn't, couldn't make it happen. Um, I the I had like chunks of, of information, but nothing actually like connected for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have to do all these sales funnels. Okay. Yeah. You need to drive traffic. Okay. Yeah. You have to find a product, but how do you, 
how, how do you do that? All of it. Like what, what do you do? How, in what order and who do I talk to? So um, at some point in, I want to say it was February, it was February of this year. I came across a, I want to, it was an advertisement. I think that I saw on Instagram for a $7 course. And I was like, $7 teach me how to do stuff online. This is what I need. Right. Like I was like, I'll put in $7 to see what this thing's about. So I clicked it. Mm. Um, and I was pretty much sold after day two. <laughs> um, I was like, I can do this. And so I, I, I jumped in and my high school kids, we talked about it the whole time. Like I told them exactly what I was doing, what I was wearing, oh how God. this was happening. This um, was so cool. Really? You were yes. okay. Keep yeah. Going. Oh my God. So, so cool. I, I dove in, um, I dove in and, and, and invested in the blueprints and, we, I talked to my kids about that. I said, you know, this is, this is what my investment's going to be. Um, we, I told them, you know, it's a small investment to start a business. Um, it's, I mean, comparatively speaking, cause everything, if you're going to run a brick and mortar business, you have to have way, way more money than that. So I was like, let's, let's do this. Had never been on TikTok before. No idea how to make videos like that. So my high school kids helped me with that. Um, they were sending me trending sounds like, Mrs. Roberts, you need to do this. You need to do that. And so I would get on and and we would do that. We would look at it like during class, we would look at, um, my, I have, I keep, I'm a stats nerd. So I would keep stats on my growth on TikTok and my growth on Instagram. And, um, so we take a look at that. Okay. What do we need to do to increase that? How can we make that better? Um, so we just, it was a daily conversation in my classroom. We started every, every day of class started with that. So, you know, that's this how, un- how it went. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You are so, you're the best teacher. I wish <laughs> I had you. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. Like what a gift and what a cool way to integrate what, you, you know, you're, you're, your kind of current career with what you're doing or what you want to do and just kind of like it supports this whole prime, you know, mission of supporting yourself and, 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 and more for your family. I mean, it's wow. And what humility to be able for, you know, I, I, I'm sure that so many teachers across the country, if a student would have asked that question, they would have, like invalidated them or maybe tried to make the kid feel stupid like that. Well, I don't know. I just can imagine. And I'm sure you can too. The the (laughs) the list of different responses that, because that's not just in your classroom, in your school, all kids are interested in technology. All children understand that technology is playing a huge role in our world now and it will continue to do so. And for you to be so humble to say, I don't know, like I need to learn that. What was that like for you? And, and, and man, I mean, because a lot of us think, especially us big dumb men, we think that humility, you know, having humility will make us weak, you know, but in entrepreneurship, having humility and knowing what your limitations are, or knowing what you know, knowing when to shut up and listen, and knowing when to talk. Because if you <laughs> talk when you're supposed to listen, you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. And that us men, particularly, I, I can't speak for anybody else, have a hard time with that. So can you talk about what that was like to say, I don't know, and then like the, the internal conversation... I'm just fascinated by that moment when you were like, I don't know, but then you made the decision to kind of like go learn and explore. And, and I would assume the kid's reaction now is quite engaged there. Or I would mm-hmm. assume they're really interested, but that had to be quite a process for you. Yeah. I, um, I've always been, I feel like I've always been the teacher that's, I'm not afraid to fail in class. Like, I, you know, I'll, I'll try something new. Um, I love to do try things that are new and then reflect on that and decide, okay, what can we do better? Right. Mm. But um, I'm just not, I'm not afraid to do those. I'm not afraid to go out on a limb and try something new, especially if it benefits my kids. So Mm. I, you know, I told them 
I have no, I have no idea how to do this. And so when we started, um, it was pretty funny because I, I told them, I'm probably not going to make any money doing this. Like I, I, and you by, know, the way, by the way, you, I mean, I, I just, I don't, I just wanted to tell everybody since we're a few minutes in and I want to get back to your feelings and what that was, but we're 10 minutes in. I mean, I, you, you've got this one account that's got 55,000 followers. Um, <laughs> and, 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 uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's like they have a celebrity on, but continue. You told them, Hey, I didn't think that I was going to make any money. And you just were yeah. kind of like really going into it with low expectations. And yeah. You, and you I really have low expectations too. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I was really skeptical. Um, I, I was really skeptical and to be quite honest, I thought I was going to get scammed. <laughs> I was just like, this is what you guys like, this is not real. I can't make money like this. And then, so then I started having fun making TikToks, but my kids were bound and determined. They were like, we're going to make you TikTok famous. Like, that's what's going to happen here. You're going to be TikTok famous and we're going to tell everybody about it. And, um, and I, I actually got on TikTok and used TikTok because I didn't want anyone to know I was doing it, right? Like just my classroom and my immediate family, I didn't want anybody else to know. The, um, nobody else needs to know this. Um, so we, we started and I just... I mean, we just, we just went about it and I, but I felt like it needed to be validated because my kids had been asking me these questions for a couple of years. And at some point, um, I just had to decide like, it's worth it to show them this, like it's worth it. And quite frankly, I thought I was going to show them the opposite. I thought I was going to show them that it really doesn't work. And the day, the first day, <laughs> The first day that I made money, like the first, my very first commission, I came into class and I like, you guys, <laughs> you guys. And it was just a couple dollars. But I mean, they were just like, no, you made money. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I hit, I mean, I hit some milestones in there and I would show <laughs> my kid, I, like I would show it to my kids because I graph everything, right? So I would show it to my kids, and they would just be like, "Nah, oh, like no way, like that's," you know. I think they were blown away by it too. Just like yeah. they just had no idea, and and so because everybody thought, all my kids thought that TikTok actually paid you, um, you know, they thought creator fund kind of thing. Right. TikTok actually pays you. Right. And I was like, if I got paid by the TikTok creator fund, I would be broke for the rest of my life. Like there, it, like it wouldn't, the that wouldn't be there. The money's not yeah. there. So you learned where the money is, how yeah. to make the money instead of just spinning your wheels on social media. That was right. important to identify how to actually monetize this content, right? And yeah. One of the yeah. big takeaways was we're not making money from the company's TikTok. We can, right. we can, you can mm -hmm. make money from, for example, um, a lot of people have make, been making money from YouTube. We yes. Into yeah. the millions and millions of views. Yeah. You can begin to, what, what you do is you can opt to simply, they, they call it or they've changed the name, I'm sure, over time, but monetize your channel. Monetize it. Where you now can show advertisements or mm -hmm. they show advertisements in the beginning of your videos. So for those of you who, you know, this is great clarification because for the most part, the majority of videos that get posted on the internet make no money from yep. that company, whether it be Facebook, TikTok, whatever, in the large majority. So you learned that, okay, I have to, it's about building the audience and then it's about kind of chumming the waters, getting people to kind of come and then knowing what to do once I got their attention, right? Yep. And I had to, we, I mean, they helped me. We talked through who my target audience was going to be. Like we, we talked through it. Um, who do we want this to be? And so I, quite frankly, I told them, I think it should be me. Like, I, I think I should be my target audience because let's be real. There are a lot of educators out there that are not happy with education right now. And we're, we, we just aren't. And it, honestly, at that point in time, uh, I was a little, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder from my school district because I had just taught in the two toughest years of my life yeah. and we didn't get a raise. 
they just said, sorry, everybody around us, every other school district got a 4% raise and we got zero, nothing. And I was like, what, what is happening? And then 85% of our teachers approved our contract. Why? Why would you do that? Like, this is such crap. So I was kind of angry about that too. And there are other teachers that feel exactly the same way that I do. And I mean, you, we work our butts off and we get paid nothing, ver- nothing for what we do. So, and I, you know, I, I, we ran, I ran two businesses in our high school. Like we, we ran a coffee shop and we had an on, we, we had a little school store type thing. Mm-hmm. I ran those businesses and made no money from that. Nothing. We didn't even get paid a stipend for it. So why, why am I, why, <laughs> why am I still doing this? <laughs> yeah. But um, that was part of it. And so we, That's a we, real dilemma and no T and you know what? It's like, it's like nobody can ever understand or what that's really like to be in that position. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a teacher, so I can't understand what that's like to, to, but then I can imagine there's almost like a little bit of a guilt that you feel of sharing that. Cause you, you, you know, all the, it's, it's, yeah. it's such a nice thing to say, Oh, oh, I don't do it for the money. I do it for the kids. But the truth yeah. is, is that, but I also, my family suffering, like I'm suffering yeah. over here legitimately. I do, still do it for the kids. But I, I just, I'm glad that you're saying what's real for you because <laughs> without it, well, I don't think that you would have ever tapped into this motivation that you, that you, that you tapped into that you're describing yeah. right now. I tell people, you know, I tell people a lot. It's, it's not necessarily um, that you find your audience. It's that it's the right time for your audience. And I agree. If I wasn't in that position and, and things weren't going the way they were, I probably wouldn't have jumped in. I probably would have just taught all of this on theory instead of what I've actually done. But we, I mean, at that point in time, February of last year, the, the gas prices were really, really high. Um, I didn't get a raise. We, you know, so instead of making we where we were, we were not there anymore. So we were, our budget was getting really tight around our home and it, it was just uncomfortable. And then I ended up having to replace a vehicle and I was like, Oh, I don't, how am I going to make that happen? And I didn't want to take money out of my, out of my investments, out of my retire, what I'm going to be using for retirement. So I just looked at my husband and said, I have to find, we, we, I have to find another way to bring in more income. So that had a lot to do with it as well. It was just, we were just at a point in our life where I'm just tired of barely, like we just survive and I'm tired of surviving. I don't want to live in survival mode anymore. I want to be able to live my life. So, yeah. <laughs> You're wrong, girlfriend. You're wrong for that. You know, and, and part of, part of I think, you know, the, the system, whatever, just the way of kind of the way of living in, in, in modern societies is that, you know, survival is the norm. Mm-hmm. Survival is the norm. And if you have more, You know, if you have more, you're striving for more, well, you're greedy and you're reminded of that by all the people around you who are not striving for more. They get a little bit agitated when somebody starts reaching to climb out of the bucket. That's where the crabs in a bucket thing came from. No crab wants to see another crab get out of that bucket. So they pull them back down and it's just crabs in a bucket, man. You know, so it's, there's an element of, um, and you, you tapped on it. You, you said you went on TikTok. you, you know, it was like, you wanted this to just be for you. You were going to share it with your students, but you didn't really want the opinions of everybody else. You didn't really want, and, and, and there was probably a little bit of fear of rejection or judgment. Mm -hmm. And there has to, you know, that is such a, that's an issue for every single person that does this. And I wonder if you could just say more about that. Where do you think that came from? Where are you at now with it? How did you get through it? Uh, I think for me, the, how the, are you getting through it? Cause I'm still yeah. not through it either. So let yeah. me reframe that question to, you know, can you just say yeah. more about that? Well, the judgment part for me was I had done things before, 
you know, I had, I had done things before MLM type stuff, that, that type of thing. And, um, tried to do the at home parties. And, and honestly, for the last four years, I worked a part-time job at a sporting goods store. Um, and so I was leaving my home and getting paid $10 an hour to do it. And then, you know, so I hopped on this and I thought, okay, I'll go on TikTok. No one's even going to know that I'm there. Um, I don't have to worry about my friends going, oh, she's trying to do something else. Oh, she's but, just but trying to make extra money. But you weren't war. But there, but there was, was there any concern at all about anybody finding out that you had that part-time job making $10 an hour? Or was no. that something that you were totally comfortable with everybody else knowing? Okay, I can't say no to that. When people would come in the store that I knew, there was a bit of embarrassment there. Like they would look at me and be like, why does she need a part-time job? Why? I mean, that's just, you know, I, I just always felt like people were staring and looking at me like, why is she here? And I had my own reasons for being there because I wanted to put more money in my investment account. Like I wanted to actually be able to retire at some point in time. Right. So that was, I mean, that was what a lot of it was. And then when I started posting things online, I was like, well, nobody's going to see this. It's TikTok. TikTok has a billion people on it. No one's going to see this. And then about a month later, teachers in my building were like, oh yeah, I follow you on TikTok. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you do right. what? <laughs> right. Um, so then I realized that there were a lot of people in our building that actually do follow me on TikTok. And uh, that, that kind of, can, I, I mean, I talk a lot about, I don't hate my job. I, I love teaching kids. I hate everything else that goes with it. Mm. teaching kids, talking to kids, educating kids. That's what I do. Yeah. I do not like having to go to professional development. I do not like having to um, write kids up for things. I don't, the, all the other stuff that comes with it. There's so much red tape involved in teaching. It just, it just gets terrible. But so yeah. I talk about a lot of those things. And at first I was kind of concerned that people were going to be that weren't, they weren't going to take that real well. Yeah, and that I was, you know, like potentially out against a, a communist leader. You yeah, know, a little bit like, I, I felt man, are the black ops choppers going to come in here and and snatch me up? <laughs> you know, yeah, I, mean? I felt like hey, I was going to end up in the principal's tomorrow. office. Yeah, am I going to show up tomorrow and 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 be fired? Yeah, and and, and honestly, yeah. if my job wanted to fire me today, I would say, okay, I'm going to go pack up my stuff and I'll see you later. Like that's how I would be at this point in time because that's that's the empowerment that this has given me. To where now, if they came in and said, you need to stop posting stuff on TikTok, I would say, see you later, because I'm not going to stop posting stuff on TikTok. Like, I, you know, that's just kind of where I'm at with it. I just feel like education is, is in a place where it needs a lot of help. And um, I'm just trying to show kids what they can do to uh, better their lives without having to spend a billion dollars at, at, at college, you know, <laughs> my, my earpiece just fell out of my ear. <laughs> and they also at, are already asking for that. They want mm -hmm. that. They know it's you're the only teacher or possibly the only adult person in their entire lives who actually is talking about this huge, big thing that they all are interested in. They're all doing already in most of the things that they're doing with the tools are n having a, maybe not a positive impact on them or as positive as it could. I'm not saying I don't want to demonize social media and kids using it, but the truth is, is that Yep. <laughs> yeah. The internet it yeah. can can do some damage to a ch a child's mm -hmm. self esteem. It can, yeah. right? It, it's 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 a double edged sword. All things yeah. that have great power can have can do great damage. And so, yeah. you know, you're you're the only you may have been the only person in their entire world that showed them how to use this, and they're asking for it. Mm -hmm. That's what is <laughs> mind blowing to me. They're asking. They're saying we want to learn this and they're not telling you you're stupid you you old people don't know they're saying we what is how can we use this to better our lives to get out of the situations that we're in to 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 connect with more people i mean kids the the crazy thing about kids is they have none of this negative bullshit this these these all these 
these years or decades of kind of the world weighing them down with everybody else's negativity and opinions, they're eager and optimistic, you know, and it's all you got to do with a child is just get them started and Mm -hmm. they'll run with it most of the time, just the basics. And, um, it, 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 it's just amazing. It's always that outlier, you know, that outlier teacher or that, that it is, it's unfortunate because the masses get the shitty, just run of the mill, systematic education. And, yeah. and occasionally children get blessed with an outlier teacher who's willing to think and do something outside of the box. And yeah. That's why I'm in love with this story. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think I'm blessed in, in, I, I think things happen when I don't, because I'm not a core teacher because I don't teach English. I don't te- teach math. I don't teach science. I don't teach social studies. I, my curriculum is a little bit more flexible, I guess I could say. Um, because, you know, when you teach the core subjects, you're required to teach certain things. When we teach electives, we have competencies that we have to meet. We want them to know certain things. But you, I have a lot of freedom in how and what I teach for them to reach those competencies. So I just always try to do new things. One, because I get bored if I'm teaching the exact same thing all the time. But two, I want things that apply to their everyday life. It has to be applicable because if it's, if they can't see, if they can't see the fact that it benefits them in some way, they're not going to be interested in it. They yeah. just aren't. Um, and, and that's, it makes my job a lot more fun and it makes being at school a lot more fun for those kids. So I have a class right now of 30 kids that we are going over this kind of stuff. Um, we've talked about affiliate marketing. We've talked about just uh, creating digital products online. We've talked about all kinds of different things. I said, you know, you don't have to, I'm not trying to teach you exactly what I do. I will show you how I do what I do. But I also want to show you some of the other things that are out there too. And so we, we talk a lot about that kind of stuff. And then my kids have realized that regardless, if you build your own products online, you still have to market them. Mm. Yeah, you still have to go out there and find an audience and figure out how to do that. And so that's when the light bulb kind of came on for them. And they were all like, whoa, okay, now we get it. Now I understand. Now I understand. Because I showed them, I don't know, we were talking about digital planners the other day and that, you know, you there's 59,000 people that have bought this one digital planner that costs $12 or something. And so they did the math on it. And we're like, what? <laughs> they were just like, what? But I don't know. I talk to him a lot about just the fact that I do what I do and the, uh, I do what I do and I love what I do, but I, uh, I, I love teaching, but I also really, really love, really love what I've come across. You know, the affiliate marketing has just lit a fire in me that has been gone for a while now. And so when I get to come home and work on it, that's what I love to do. But I also love to, I like the fact that I can show people that I work a full-time job. Mm. I taught and I coached all last year. Mm. um, And I was able to do this around my full-time job um, and be successful at it. Cause I hear all the time, I'm just too busy. I'm too busy. I don't have time for that. You do have time. You're making excuses. (laughs) You do have time. You just have to prioritize it. And for me, it was a, I, I want to see change. I need to see change. So either I do this or what, you know, either I do this and make something of it or what's the point. So. Oh my gosh. What a, what a story. What, what, wait, hold on. Kelly, what's your last name? Roberts. Oh, what a story, Mrs. (laughs) Roberts. What a story. I mean, God, just absolutely just mind blowing. And I am, I'm surprised at how education is already shifting right in front of our eyes. It's not like something's coming. It's already here, you know, Mm -hmm. 
it's it's people are are I mean look at this great example and I'm humbled not this this humbles me uh it doesn't make me feel any other way except we're on the right path here and we just need to keep going and even if we only are able to infiltrate um you know the school system in the traditional you know kids minds through the internet and stuff like that that's fine if it never ends up getting taught in classrooms like you're doing you know like god bless you but it's it's crazy because i you know we were just in Inc. Magazine, yeah. <laughs> you know, as the 60, yeah. I think, third fastest growing privately held education company in America. And yeah, and it's like, there you go, you know. Um, it, that was never, you know, to go from to have your 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 company um, or what you're doing be recognized as a as a legitimate. I mean, look at that bottom category. Look at that bottom category. It's 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 sixty third fastest growing edu company. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. How it, it, how you know? I mean, just 12, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Um um. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to get, you know, basically <laughs> tape my ass back on my body because it, it fell off and I'm trying <laughs> to figure out who I am and where I'm going and I'm a high school dropout and all this kind of other stuff. And so, you know, uh, it's like, I'm just, I'm just amazed the, the change is not coming. It's already here. You know, and I think that's what you realized about your kids is that they're already yeah. they're already on. They're going to find the information, basically, whether you introduce it to them or somebody else does. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like drugs or drinking or sex or any other topic that kids are eventually going to be exposed to. We as the adults, this is how we shift society. You know, this is how we really, in my opinion, make a a you know this is how we create the change that we want to see is that we have to start with our kids we have to start with the next generation and we have to talk about the things that they want to talk about and the things that are relevant to them and i just listed off four or five of them and yep. any time an adult chooses to avoid it and forces the child to go out and have to learn about it on their own. Well, the child is now responsible for not only finding the information, but also judging people's character, whether it's a good source of information or not. A child's not equipped yeah. to do that. So, of course, they're going to fall into the arms of, right? And that's yeah. so. that's the story of so many kids who you know, whether their father or mother was completely not present, whether they never had a teacher like you who did something a little out of the box or whether they just had people, you know, they just never, they grew up in a house where they never talked about anything. When a child's left to their own devices, they're lost. And, and yep. we don't meet them where they're at, not where we want them to be, but where they're at. And your kids were like, we want, we're interested in this. We're interested in online marketing. And I, it's the beauty is this of this is they they're getting so much value, but you've used it. You use that situation, not in my opinion, not to be egoic and say, well, that's not what we're talking about in this class. We're talking about what I think is important. You, you in, in doing that, in being humble and in saying, I also look at my life and say it's not good enough. It launched you. You use that as the motivation, the fuel to launch yourself into this new career path. And um, it's a great testimony of really kind of using your situation as fuel. Each and every one of us has some pain, some things that we want to stop or some things that if we get humble and say, I can do better, that's where the humility piece is so important that in order for us to really, I think, have a good launch to have, we have to go into it taking full responsibility. We can't go into it as a victim 
because yeah. then when it doesn't work out, we're going to say, well, why can't I succeed or, 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 um, I didn't get enough support or, 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 you know, yeah. somebody didn't do it for me or the course didn't. And it's like, well, that's entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is both about finding good resources, but also about being resourceful. Mm -hmm. and, and so you used your situation as that fuel and, and, and kind of the skills that you already have developed in your life as a teacher. And I was just talking about this morning, kicking off decade in a day. I said, how many different professions are there? Man, there's doctors, there's lawyers, there's teachers, there's plumbers, there's carpenters, there's all these different kind of people. And I said, before you all start to think that you're brand new and you don't know anything and you're bound to fail, I want you to realize that you have skills from each one of these jobs and professions and all these, whether it be parents or whatever, that you you can use. And oh, by the way, what qualities did you develop in doing those jobs? that you that you got from those jobs and you know what they listed perseverance consistency the ability to be able to show up on time the same thing for kids if any kids are listening to this sports like going show extracurricular activities or schoolwork whatever you can take the skills that you develop doing that and they're transferable over to this. And what I explained to people on getting started with Decade and Day this morning is this may be new, the equipment, you know, the, mm -hmm. but all the skills, like you're a secretary at a legal firm, your ability to be able to deal with people and those people skills and just that's a skill. Now, you may not realize that's a skill and you may downplay that. But that's a skill that you developed. To I developed a skill when I was working with my father, being in people's homes. I was like an 18 year old kid, and to not to actually figure out how to navigate and coexist in somebody's home while mm -hmm. we were doing work. That was a skill instead yeah. of just being a total Neanderthal in there and not knowing how to handle myself. All those things are skills that, when it comes time that we say, "Okay, we want to learn something new." Sure, humility is needed. We need to say, and I'm going to have to learn some things, and I'm yeah. going to have to get humble, and I'm going to have to go from teacher to student for a minute, but also not fully discount yourself to the point to where you just are only this newbie who knows nothing because you have all these wonderful skills. I'm sure your skills being a teacher are transferring wonderfully over into this craft. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, um, I have the, I, I'm, I have the ability to make my content conversational. I think that that really helps. Um, I am more comfortable doing talking head videos than I am doing the pointing kind of thing. I do them all, but I, I'm far more comfortable doing, doing the conversational type of let's talk about this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I'm very comfortable showing the positive as well as the negative. Um, I had, I have some of my high school kids hop onto my lives. So when I get on TikTok live, I will have high school kids that hop on there. So I have to be real careful sometimes about what I say, how I say some things, but they're, I mean, they're fantastic. But I was talking the other night about how I talk in my classroom about the good and the bad. It has to be the UPS guy just came to my house and my dogs are going crazy. Um, it has to be, you have to show people the good and the bad because if all you're ever showing them is the good, yeah. then we're, we're being so fake out on social media. Yeah. But, um, I personally, in my classroom, I have learned, there's one thing that I learned from teaching. It's that if you come in as somebody other than your authentic self, your kids will see right through that and they will not listen. They don't, they don't care if, if they know that you are coming in not you, that you're line, coming in trying to be something different. Line. line yeah. Right. I mean, it, they it, see very, right through at it. A, at a very simple level, what they're yeah. saying to themselves is the person's lying. They're a liar. I, I yeah. think, I, and, and maybe not directly out calling you, but there's that sense of distrust yes. that, begins yeah. to, that, that begins to be the foundation of your relationship because they feel like they can't connect to you. And children want to connect to some, children are looking yes. to connect to plug in and, yeah. and, and they can only plug into something that they feel they can trust 
Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. And I, I do believe we still yearn for that even as adults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I also, I teach my kids through stories. I tell more stories in my classroom than anything else because they learn from it. That's when their ears perk up and they're just like, Oh, she's telling a, she's telling a story. Let's pay attention. And, um, that has transferred into my content too. I tell a lot of stories in my content and sometimes I think I'm funny and no one else does, but you know, it's okay. Cause I just don't care. Like I'm just going to be me because I can't be anything else. Mm. And if I try to go on there and be, um, miss prim and proper, and I'm going to talk at you instead of with you, that doesn't work. It doesn't work in my high school classroom. I wouldn't imagine it would work anywhere else. So, you know, th those are some of the skills that I've learned with my kids is that, I have to be just me and I have to show them that I am a person just like they are. And I discuss with them, I, their opinions, their opinions and their values matter to me. And so I ask them, what do you guys want to learn about? What are some of the things that you're struggling with? What are, you know, we, we stop class pretty regularly to have life lessons, right? Like high school kids, they don't, we, I, I was telling Joanne before I hopped on today, I, talk to my kids a lot about, you know, how do you get an apartment after you get out of high school? How do you do these things after you get out of high school? Because we're not teaching that in class anymore. We teach, we teach algebra two that most of our kids will never ever use when they leave high school, Absolutely. but we're not teaching them how to balance a bank account or how to find a high yield savings account or how to, you know, make money work for them. We don't talk about those things. So I have to be real. And that's what I do in my content too. I take, you know, the things that I do in class and I talk about them on, on the internet too. And my kids will tell you, my kids jumped on the live the other night. And we're like, she is exactly this way in our classroom. This is who she is. And, and cause I don't know how to be anything different. <laughs> yeah. There's great continuity there and, and there's more alignment there, you know, and that's really when we don't have to constantly turn off and on our work personalities yeah. And uh, all that are professional corporate, you know, attitudes and stuff, you know, that takes the humanity out of uh, out of our out of our out of our lives. It, it turns us more robotic. And and, and the, the reason why that's important in some aspects of business is because you don't want to be emotional uh, in, in, in every decision. You know, you don't yeah. want to, to it's every interaction is not about, you know, um, you know, you have to be logical. You have to balance logic. I, I, I learned that in drug treatment. I, you know, when I, when I, it was I over E intellect over emotion, you know, because yeah. get so emotional, you know, uh, but um, golly, it, it, it does though, when we go corporate and we have to, you know, do all these different acts and, and stuff, you know, we lose that connection with our, our coworkers are uh, and then if we come online and we do that, nowadays uh you no know, nobody can latch on to us nobody can connect with us and and when you're speaking to somebody through a screen yeah. there's no other you know you lose the sense of the smell or the or just the the energy of being in the mm -hmm. same room with somebody so what it's even more important that the emotional senses or the tonality you know the ears that you that you uh, use all of those tools to your advantage to try to connect and vulnerability being vulnerability. And, and when we, when we, when we say be authentic, this is a theme nowadays with a lot of people <laughs> in content yeah. who want to be authentic. Right. But what does that really mean? Well, it, it, to me, what it means is, is that um, it, it's that, that I don't lie. That's yep. what it means. And, and that I don't yep. embellish. And mm -hmm. that I don't omit uh, things. And that's just what being authentic means. It's not yeah. about it. And, and if you want to talk about body language and emotions, well, sure. My authentic self is a little bit sillier than my tough guy <laughs> when I'm in the club and I'm hanging out. Like my right. authentic self is a little bit cuter and more sensitive and sillier and, and, and more feminine. Honestly, if you talk about masculine and feminine energy, um, but my, 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 uh, but, um, but it really boils down to the things that I say and how I say them. And nowadays, what truth is what resonates? And we were just alluding to that in the classroom. Kids can pick up on that as well. 
I think a lot of us have a difficult time when we're starting online talking about being new, talking about yes. just acknowledging the obvious things, which take all their power away, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I started online marketing, creating content and so forth, I started to, I, I never told my story, never revealed my history with drug addiction or homelessness or any high school dropout, none of that. But, but when I did, it, it offered a little bit more humanity and it offered a little mm -hmm. bit more of my um the fact that i was uh you know normal relatable you know people could understand because that was what their lives were like yep <laughs> life is perfect right yeah. but it took all the power of them away so now mm -hmm. i was in an instant no longer afraid of anybody finding anything yep. out about me because i figured out i controlled the narrative I took the thing that was a bad thing and figured out how to tell the story in a way that was inspiring and empowering. And I think that's also important that you can control the narrative throughout your journey of finding who your authentic self is yeah. and, and being your authentic self and all that. What's also important to remember is, is that you can control the narrative of your, of your message Yes. And, in, and in being, what does being your authentic self to me mean? It means telling the truth. And it also means putting myself out there. If it's dominating me and it's making me afraid that you're going to find out something about me, I got to deal with that fear. So what I choose to do <laughs> is just figure out how to put it out there in the open for everybody. Try, try to control the narrative, at least my narrative of how I view it. And then ultimately people can do what they want with it, but I'm no longer afraid that they're going to find it out about me, you know, yeah. um, you know, and it, that, that started, those were the big things that were important at the beginning of my journey. But then eventually I started to care less and less that people knew that like I lived a norm, like a pretty regular life or I might pick a shirt up off the ground and just throw it on before I go live and that I didn't get all prim and proper and have a shower and get all, you know, comb my hair that I'm just <laughs> right. Like that attitude of, of that was how I addressed my imposter syndrome. It allowed me to be more comfortable in, in even find an authentic self that I really didn't even know that I had when I first got started. Yeah. But I peeled, I just kept peeling layers kept taking things that were scary or afraid, figuring out how to put them out in front of my audience and deal with them and, uh, and not let that shit weigh me down, you know? Yeah. I, I'm not an emotional, like I am not a very emotional person. I don't let people see that side of me very often at all. And I probably have cried more times doing videos on my TikTok than most of my family members have ever seen me cry. Like I, you know, I had one day where I, um, had a really good day, like monetarily wise. And, and that really, it really choked me up because of how thankful I was for coming across this. And, um, I, so I've started to be a little bit more like, I, I feel like I'm really vulnerable sometimes when I don't want to be, but it just comes out. And so that's, that's just me. But also, you know, I, I lost my dad back in June. Um, and I was trying to figure out how to do my business and handle that and still be me. Uh, and there, there was a point in time where I go back and I look at some of those videos and I'm just like, Whoa, cause I was really down. I was oh. down and I was sad and I was depressed and it was yeah. hard. Um, but the amount of people and the amount of support and the amount of nice comments that I got from people, because I shared that information with them. Like, this is why you're seeing me like this because I just lost my dad. And that was really important. Um, and I think people got it and they understood it. And it just, I think they're relatable because there's so many people out there that go through those things. And, and I, you know, I could have let that set me back. I could have not done videos. I could have, I could have just taken a week or two off and said, screw it. I'm not going to do it. But that's, that just wasn't, that's not who I am. But also my dad and I had talked about this business that I had started while he was in the hospital. And um, 
I will say that this business allowed me to be with my dad at the end of his life. Um, I spent three weeks with him in a different city where I was having to stay in hotels and spend time, you know, money on food and doing all those things. And this business allowed me to be there with him. So I will forever be grateful for that. But also the fact that I could talk to him about it. And he was just like, why are you, what are you doing on your phone over there? Cause I would do TikToks while I was sitting in the chair with him. And uh, he was like, what are you doing? And I would explain it to him, you know, and he's like, tell me about this. So I talked to him about it and he was just like, that's awesome. Cause I mean, we, you know, I have three college degrees. I have three college degrees and I will never, ever, ever be able to do what, what I've done in the world. You know, I will never be able to do in the world of education, what I have done with affiliate marketing. I just, it will never happen for me. And we, so my dad was really proud of that. My dad was like, you've found something that you clearly love. Um, that is improving your life. And we had a really good conversation about it. So my dad was a teacher too. Um, my dad had a doctorate degree and still um, could barely make ends meet, you know? So education doesn't always meet, <laughs> education doesn't always meet the income, right? So I don't know, he was just really proud of that fact. And so I kept making videos, I kept making videos. And um, I think I missed one day, I was talking about this on my live the other night. I, I think I missed one day of making videos and that was the day that we had my dad's funeral. Um, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But, you know, he he supported it and he thought it was great. But I didn't tell him for like three months. Like it was literally when my dad was in the hospital dying um, that he found out about what I was doing because <laughs> I had kept it from him for so long. And he only knew because I was doing him in his, in his hospital room with him. <laughs> he was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> it was funny. What an amazing opportunity! What an amazing connection that was made in a in a in a little seed that was planted in you, um, because you were already taking action. Yeah. And I think that the whole waiting for a lot of people say, "What? Wow, that's a great story, Kelly." I, nothing like that will ever happen to me. And of course, you just shared that your father died and all that. I mean, that's a and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you just had that great loss. But because you were already taking action and not sitting around waiting for the miracle to come to you, but you were kind of like, you know, in order to for things to happen, you know, we have to the old thing. If nothing changes, nothing changes. You were making changes. And because you were taking the actions and trying and do putting in the work, um, you know, it only worked if you work it. You were putting in the work. It it provided yes. that you made that memory happen. You, may, because of what ball you already had rolling, because of the things that you were already doing, you had that powerful connection with your father about this particular business, about this venture that you're doing. And you were able to connect and, and I'm sure that's always going to be with you. Oh yeah. That's yeah. always going to be with you. And my point in reflecting this back is that if you would have just been sitting on your hands, kind of like maybe dreaming about it or hadn't take, taken any action yet, but maybe just talked about it, you wouldn't have had that same powerful experience that, you're already doing it. You're in the room with him. He's asking you what, and then yeah. <laughs> blossoms to there into this moment where he's proud of you. And mm -hmm. that's something you can hold on to. Um, the, the power of just taking the actions of just being willing to take the risk. Like it's so refreshing to talk to somebody who's been responsible for teaching entrepreneurship. And so in some capacities in high school, as you, as you've done, but you're also willing to take the chances and willing to like all these magical things that you've shared with us are because, you know, you decided to take the action at first. And it's such a powerful testimony of going and making what you want to happen, happen instead yep. of just like waiting for your break or like, you know, like I can't think of more difficult situations than being a, than having three degrees being 
you know, hardly making ends meet, but having to go in every day and do something that just t- you, your heart's in it, but your wallet is so far away. Yep. <laughs> and, and then, and then you, and then you're losing your dad in each of those situations are, are a mess. This is what we mean folks. When we're talking about yeah. turn your mess into a message, both yeah. of those situations are a mess for millions of people. And they were, they, they were a mess for you. And because of how you showed up, it, it, it you, you now have a message from those in that this is one of the best examples. Um, and gosh, we have a great example every day, but this is a great example of how, your you control your narrative and how you can turn your mess into a message and um thank you just thank you for being willing to share it with us today salute to you like seriously <laughs> keep you. up the great work and i all i want for you is to have the and and hope and charge your life with is like i hope you create the freedom that you you need and deserve to continue to make the impact that you are going to clear you're already making and as you said you never had the chance to really make the impact that you that you can and you're not mad about that you're motivated about that yeah well, <laughs> yeah i, like I am that about you i like <laughs> that about you thanks really have a great holiday season Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and all and all the things in between. Kwanzaa, if you celebrate nothing at all, um, happy holidays. Thanks for your time, and I hope you'll come back and talk to us again. Maybe we'll do a follow up episode in the beginning of the year and see see how you're doing. Okay, I'd love to. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Kelly, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, my friends, you can follow Kelly at Building You Online. She's on TikTok, she's on Instagram, and she's on fire, my friends. And, you know, I I didn't know she was on fire when I was going to sit down and talk to her this morning. Um, It's just amazing that, you know, each one of us has those hands that can go grab that wood and that, that, you know, all the things that we need to start a fire, man, start a fire. And that's what I, I would say for each one of us. Let's start a fire, man. Let's start a fire in our life. You know, let's start a fire under our ass and uh, get things going, you know, to figure out what in your life, what is a mess that you can, if you do something different about it, when you get through it, you can turn it into a message. Get out of here. Happy holiday. Be legendary. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,